Hi, I'm Hitch Black, and today I'm going to be talking about the breakdown of Denard scaling. This links to my other video about Moore's Law, so that may provide useful context for this video, although it isn't necessary. Denard scaling is the rule that, as transistors get smaller, their power density stays the same, which just didn't pan out. Around the 2010s, clock speeds stopped increasing, meaning that the amount of clock cycles per second remained the same, which isn't to say that single core performance has stagnated, as significant improvements have been found in clock cycle efficiency which means that more can be done within each cycle. This is because of multiple issues, the worst of which is heat, as whenever a processing unit is running it requires power, and because of inefficient circuits it produces mostly heat. So in order to increase your clock speed you have to increase the power of your circuit, which means that you have to better cool the CPU, as the more power you put into the circuit, the hotter the circuit becomes. And the hotter the circuit becomes, the more cooling you need, with most of the best cooling solutions involving liquids and electronics in close proximity, which is a bad combo, and the more advanced solutions are even more unapproachable. The second and third are my speculation, by the way. The second is economic, as people who have the issue of not having enough clock speed just overclock their CPUs, which usually shifts the bottleneck to another part of the computer, so there isn't really a demand for higher clock speeds outside of high-end gaming, and even then, most bottlenecks are not the CPU clock speeds, but the software not having multi-core threading or GPU bottlenecks. The third is because manufacturers don't want to. By keeping power low, it keeps computers reliable, which benefits the companies. As if you sell customers products with a much higher risk of breaking within three years, your company would take a hit to its reputation and be blamed for releasing defective products. And your customers would have to pay more for insurance, meaning that many of them wouldn't buy your product with it being uninsurable and prone to damage. Whereas if your customers themselves burn out a chip by overclocking, it doesn't increase insurance price and your company can't be blamed. So in conclusion, companies don't release chips with high clock speeds, because they are more prone to heat damage and if they released a product which burns itself out, it would damage their brand. If you want to increase clock speeds on your computer, overclock them modestly, as otherwise you are decreasing the lifespan of the parts, which if you keep the parts long enough will come out of your pocket. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment, and if you want to see more videos like it, subscribe and hit the bell icon.